A blue wolf took as his spouse a fallow doe. They settled at the head of the Onan River to raise their offspring, and there were born the Mongols. So begins my life's work, the secret history of the Mongols. I have been selected to compose this epic because great events are about to take place. We are going to leave Mongolia. I have lived always on this frigid, dry, and endless steppe. The tribes here squabble like vultures fighting over the desiccated corpse of a marmot. We fight over limited resources, scarce water, few trees, sparse grass for our herds to graze on. A wise and dangerous man named Timuchin means to change all this. He says that if the tribal conflict is to end, the Mongols require but two things. First, we need green pastures for our herds. With more to go around, there will be less competition among the tribes. Second, we are a nation of warriors. We need a common enemy with which to do battle. To meet both these needs, Temuchin has come up with the most modest of schemes. To unite the tribes and go to war with anyone who stands in our path. How, we ask him, how can nomadic horsemen in felt tents embark on a campaign of world conquest? Temuchin replies that we will fight not as warriors, but as a unified army. We fight not for our glory, but for the glory of Mongolia. And with those words, the name of Temuchin has passed almost into obscurity. His name is replaced with a title, Great Khan, Genghis Khan. Behold, the horde of Genghis Khan approaches. You men, you will visit each of the outlying tribes. You must convince as many as you can to join our glorious army. But beware the Karakitai, they are without honor. I will follow you if you can prove to us that you are favored by the gods. Bring to us a holy relic! Winter has been hard, and our warriors are hungry. Bring us twenty sheep, and we will join you. If you are injured, our monks can heal you. The Naiman are our enemy. If you drive them from the steps, then and only then will we join you.
We are at war with the Taijins. Destroy their camp and we will join you.
Thank you, Great Khan. We will honor our word by providing you with these soldiers. Team, eh? Bodgos no, Zazute. Amar wenu Teme Bolgos no team eh. Bolgoi. Bolgos no team eh. All the way. Sorgal Sons, team, eh? You have done well in bringing to us this artifact. We will ride with the great Khan! Zazute T. 
Team here. Team here. Sorry. I'm not aware of that's okay. Bodgos no team here. Sorgas team here. I'm not aware no. What's going on? That's okay. I'm not aware no. Hey man. Sorgal sauce. Sorgal man. Team here. That's okay. Team here. Sorgas. Team here. I'm not aware of that.
You must prove that our people will benefit from this alliance. There is a great wolf, Ornlu, whose pack has been attacking our flocks. Slay him, and we will join your horde. Join you, Genghis Khan. And to seal the agreement, we will give you the gift of flaming arrows. さあ、続いて。
Sorgas no, Amaro Team, Team.
salir, hey.
Amar Venu, Kime Amar Venu, Because you have vanquished our enemy, we will gladly join the horde. Four Mongol tribes now follow the banner of Genghis Khan. The rest of the world will soon know true fear. Nearly all of the Mongol tribes have united under the great Khan. The chieftains of those tribes reluctant to join were boiled alive. Each day new faces have taken up the bow. Unfamiliar hands hold the nine bands of yak hair that has become Genghis's standard. There are more men and horses gathered in the camp than I ever knew existed. Horse archers and lancers, men in leather cuirass and silk armor, all lift their heads upward to the platform from where Genghis speaks. The great Khan calls himself the punishment of God. Men smile like hungry wolves. It is dawn of the first day of the Mongolian Empire. <laughs> 